we were just about unsafe, but still safe. And you'll see one of the videos where we decided we weren't gonna go quite that fast anymore. Um, so I'm gonna give you a really high level idea of what we did. Our general mantra was find the farthest distance and go there. But as you can imagine, that's not always going to work. You might try to go the furthest distance and then you're gonna hit a wall. So instead, to handle that, what we did is we took the LiDAR reading and we looked for disparities. This would be anywhere where there's a wall blocking a reading, so you have consecutive angles of the LiDAR giving you very different numbers. And this indicates that there must be something blocked. So in this case, we have a disparity where we see maybe 2.2 meters and then 4.8 meters. Now we took that to mean maybe that is turning a corner and that's the path we want to take. If there's no disparity, that's because you have a smooth wall. That was our mentality for this. So, um, you know, that's a good approach, but it's not quite as much as you need to consider because if you just considered the, the LiDAR readings, um, <coughs> as we've seen, you could hit a wall. So it was important to us to expand out the wall so that we're not going to hit it. Do you have a question? Yeah, at what rate were you obtaining readings? I believe it's at 40 hertz. 40 hertz. So our oh, goal was okay. to stay below 25 milliseconds, and I think we kept it around 8. Um, thank you. So what we did is we took the disparities and we effectively moved them out from the wall to kind of extend the range um, of the wall so that we would only pass through safe positions. So this might mean that you take, you figure out the number of angles that correspond to that distance to the width of the car, and we're going to extend a circle and then cut off those LiDAR readings. And we're effectively working with some virtual LiDAR readings at this point. So based on those virtual readings, we have my very shakily drawn image that indicates the path that we actually are going to treat as the free space to move around. And now we don't have to worry about the size of the car. Using that, we figure out the furthest distance and that's the direction we travel. So we make local decisions and we are pretty confident that this very closely approximates the global optimal shortest path. Um, a couple other details, it is greedy, so we might not be making always the best decisions, but we're very close. Um, we choose our speed based on distance and we have a piecewise linear function to determine the speed based on the furthest distance that we see. Um, and again, it's a very, very quick processing. We made it very, uh, it, one of our goals was to use every LiDAR reading and process fast enough. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to Charlotte. Awesome. I'm pretty sure they'll play it. I wanted to first mention, I'm actually an undergraduate, and so this has been, I've been kind of, <laughs> I've been kind of on the learning end of things, so I can attest, and if anyone has any questions about that, how much I've learned through the process. I did some of the online tutorials, which um, were really informative, so um, it's been an awesome learning opportunity for me, but I get the fun part of telling you guys the videos and um, where we've succeeded and some bloopers. So um, this is an example of one of the successes of our robot and why um, our system was so great, because it wasn't so, it wasn't at all math dependent, and because it was so local, it was super easy to implement um, collision avoidance, which you can see here. Even at our fastest time trials, we were able to dodge moving obstacles boxes because our car was constantly locally optimizing that. So um, another awesome part of our robot was our, its ability to do head-to-head -head racing. Again, because it's just taking in the data around it, it's really it's able to see the cars that it's um, racing against, and because of the path that we chose. It ended up a lot of times being um, closer to the edge because we, that was one of the variables that we were controlling is how close we were cutting. And so in head to head racing, this worked out very nicely because our robot was cutting um, corners, some might say dangerously close, we say uh, the perfect distance. And so that caused us um, to succeed and able to compete and win in head to head racing. So then um, this is an example of one of the times where we were pushing the limits because that was what. Um, Shridhar really emphasized for us was just testing the limits all the time, and if we weren't flipping a car, we were not going fast enough. And at this point, we were going probably too fast. <laughs> um, and if you didn't catch it the first time, watch it right here as it goes around, and it's on two wheels. So um, then we took a step back for the actual competition. We realized, okay, maybe we need to lower that variable a little bit. Um, and that was actually paused because we had added a GoPro so we could get some awesome footage, but then obviously because of the weight, um, we cut the corner. And then this is another thing that happened um, when we cut that corner. Our robot uses LiDAR, so 
when it did do that 45 degree angle that looked really cool, at the same time our LiDAR was now reading 45 degrees and it saw a lot of open space to the right of it, which was the ceiling, and so it cut in that direction as well. So um, those are some of the drawbacks of the program that we were using. So there's a lot of places um, that we want to improve. Another one is there's this fun um, thing that comes up is some U-turns that it does when it gets confused. Um, something like mapping might be a little bit more helpful here where it's following a straight path and not just doing circles. Um, and then another example of where our algorithm fails. Um, what happens at this situation um, is that when an obstacle, in this case Nathan's feet, is presented too quickly in front of it, it cuts and then um, sees that there's a great amount of distance to the right and so it follows that. So again, our algorithm isn't perfect, and that's one thing that we emphasize. There's a lot of room for improvement, um, but we were very happy with how it performed in the competition yesterday. So. Oh, and then another thing that we were looking at is, as you can see with our robot, it's a little bit jagged motion. Some people might say it might look like a drunk driver a little bit sometimes. And so um, I definitely think that there's a lot of optimization that could go into the smoothing of the path that it takes. So I think that's about it. Yeah. I think we should post a 